Welcome to episode 94 of Sharing Life Lessons. This is season 10. We are one spirit, one soul, one world, and together we are creating a library of stories and life lessons. I am your host Hamida and I want to bring you stories because stories matter, stories inspire, stories teach, and stories heal. Listeners, today I want to open this episode with a quote from Brianna West. She says, Over time, you will realize how much of your growth is contingent upon forgetting, not suppressing, not ignoring, but simply allowing the past to be the past. This happens when we have expressed all that we need to express and have begun to fill our minds and days with new thoughts, new dreams, and new goals. Gradually, the past becomes a distant memory, another lifetime, one that we can only recall in bits and pieces. There is nothing that time cannot soften because through time, we slowly let go, often without ever realizing that we are. Before I tell you how this quote is relevant to our topic of discussion today, I want to remind those who have not subscribed to Sharing Life Lessons' new YouTube channel to please do so. Also, 45% of my listeners use Apple Podcast. If you are one of them, please leave a rating and a review. This will enable Apple Podcast to suggest this podcast to new listeners. Back to the quote. It is relevant because it talks about focusing on the present and the possibility of having new positive thoughts. The power of thought is the topic for today and for the next episode. This is a two-part series with a guest who has returned to sharing life lessons. I was compelled to invite him back and I'm grateful to him for accepting. Although these two series of episodes are not connected, I urge you to go back and listen to episodes 56, 57 and 58 because they are packed with a downpour of wisdom. Our guest for today is from Dubai. I have been attending his Saturday master classes and communal guided meditation, which is attended by several hundred people week over week. I am truly excited about having this discussion. Everyone, please join me in welcoming Amin Daya. Welcome, Amin, again to Sharing Life Lessons. It is an honor to have you back. You were my guest for episode 56, 57, and 58. You told us your life story. And in the end, in 58, you told us this really nice story about your grandmother, which I listen to every now and then. Very happy to have you back. I wanted to have you back for a reason. So first of all, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amit. I'm glad to be back again. The reason why I wanted Amin back is because he is just a lovely storyteller. And sharing life lessons is so story-based. I thought it would be great to have him back because what Amin does is he makes complex issues, complex issues that you and I think are complex when we talk about these philosophical and metaphysical concepts. They are complex to us. And Amin makes them simple when he talks about it, sometimes through stories, sometimes through explaining scientifically what they are. And today, Amin's come back to talk to us about the power of thought. Thank you. Thank you, Amida. And let's take a couple of moments and think about what are we as, as human beings? And at the end of the day, when you're living your life, you boil down to two simple elements. One is moments, because we live in this material world. Material world is governed by time and everything about this material world that we pass through is moments. So that's one element. But moments are temporary. If you look at a newborn baby, he or she is the richest being in the universe. Why? Because he or she has time. Mm -hmm. You can take a multi, multi billionaire in his or her seventies. They're very poor mm -hmm. because they're running out of time. That newborn baby is pure time. And I'm sure when you had your children, 
you may recognize the richness of them coming through with this great asset. And they're going to now expand this asset and you're going to help them do the best with their time. So one part of our existence is moments. And every moment is critical. And this is why in a lot of my lectures, I talk about live in the present, as many teachers talk about. And that really, the past is gone. It's a beacon to learn from. And the future hasn't come. And what you think the future is and worry about may or may not happen. But there's a very fine line. The past and the future meet at this very fine line, which is the present. It is where you are the most powerful. Now, let me take a moment and share a real life example with you on the power of the present. And it comes to power of thought. About in 1995, I started traveling globally and helping people to heal themselves because I was blessed with a gift of, in essence, helping people start their own healing process. So my role is not being their healer, but it's being that facilitator, the one that can give you the spark, but you convert it to a flame or the one that gives you the baton, but you run the relay race. I want to pause you right there and say that's exactly how I feel about my podcast. I am the facilitator of knowledge. I yeah. facilitate knowledge from my guests over to my listeners. And then it's on my listeners how much they want to take and run with it. That is so true. Because we have to take a position of extreme humility when we are dealing with knowledge. Because knowledge is the most valuable thing we as souls are going to derive. And facilitating knowledge, which is what you're doing, is exactly the same. It may come through you. It may arise because of the things you do but you never own it. Same with the healing. I help people heal themselves, but I said, please do not depend on me mm -hmm. because every human being has this amazing capacity. And when I recognized that, when I was blessed with that deeper understanding of how everything comes together in creation, as a scientist, I recognize that each one of us is an extremely empowered being because we have our roots in that infinite intelligence, which is our creator. So none of us is more powerful than the other, but we are all enablers for each other. And this is how I see it. Which is why so, this is such a beautiful world, because we are enablers for each other. We are enablers, nothing more. And we may come and we may go. And long after we're gone, we've left seeds behind and they will keep growing and then there will be other enablers and that knowledge will keep flowing. So when you come to the power of present, we were in Portugal and I had gone to see a lady who was suffering from terminal cancer. I said to them that, look, I'll come and I'll spend one-on-one -on -one time with her. I'll meditate with her. We'd already built a very nice bond between the two of us. And as you know, you participate in the webinars, we have sharing hope where we all get into meditation and seek to help people we don't even know. We don't even know where they are or where they may be, but we send that positive energy. So I was in Portugal. I finished my work with her. And then the next morning, apparently people must have found out that evening that I was in town. And in the lobby of the hotel, there were at least 40 people. And so the guy who was arranging my trip and we had to leave for the airport. I think it was about two and a half hours later. Mm -hmm. He said to me, we've got all these people in the lobby. Uh, some are in wheelchairs and they've come here because they would like you to see them and meditate with them and help them. Mm -hmm. But I should send them back because we're going to the airport. We don't have time. And I said, no, if they have come, then it means that we have to serve them. We have to help them and do the best we can. Then he said, what about the flight? I said, we'll make the flight. Let's start. So we started and 40 people, they come in 
explain what their issue is. We do the meditation. We start by healing. In those days, I used to do one-on-one. -on -one. Now I do larger groups uh, because one-on-one -on -one is just not practical. Mm -hmm. But we finished every single one of them, and it took us two hours to see 40 people. If you take two hours, you to, it's almost equal to three minutes per person. So this guy, and then we're on our way to the airport, and he says, and I'm, I'm scratching my head, I have to ask you this question. Because he said, I was sitting in the room with you. And each person who came in, you talked to them like they were the only people you were going to meet. And you never rushed anybody. You did the meditation with them. They left happy and peacefully. How on earth did 40 people with three minutes per person get treated? He said, I just don't understand. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, how many minutes do you think there are in an hour? And he said, 60. I said, that's where you're wrong. <laughs> and then I explained to him mm -hmm. what exactly happened. You see, when you use your power of thought to focus, and when you create that 100% focus in the present moment, time slows down. Why does time slow down? Because for all of us, that total power of focus we use in the present is only there for a few seconds. <clears throat> Most of it is born with thinking about what we have to do, who we've been with. We are either lost between the past and the future but we are not completely immersed in the present. But when it comes to doing meditations and healing and things like that, uh, we focus totally in that present moment. And that present moment, you can back in a lot. When the person came in, my complete focus was that person. And until we finished meditating and the person left, they were the only focus. So what happened? We had zero wastage of any mental energy, zero wastage of any thought. Mm -hmm. Because there was only one thought present. When you focus your thought in the power of the present, you can stretch time. You don't necessarily make a second longer because your clock will tell you that's not possible. What you fit into that second mm -hmm. is orders of magnitude more than if you went through that same second or same minute the way you normally do, which is you're all over the place between past, between future, between chaos, between everybody dragging you in different directions. You're actually living very little of the present. You're packing in very little of your present moment. And this is where when you focus on the present with your power of thought, you channel with meditation. You can sit in meditation in pure focus and time will just roll by. And if you don't focus, a few minutes later, your mind's already fed you new inputs and your focus is gone. And this is why we finished all the 40 and he said, you know, if I weren't sitting with you and I hadn't witnessed every single one, I'd never have believed that this mm. could happen. As a result, when you talk of thought, life is moments and thought. Moments will run out, but what happens to thought? When you think, you produce seeds. Thought has life. I want to bring you back to the basics, I mean, because I think you better than anyone else can explain to us. Simple question of what is thought? Sure. sure. Thought is a form of intelligent energy, highly intelligent energy that is born from our self and which is the mind. And a lot of times it is born from our higher self, which then becomes inspiration. As you, the mind has three levels. So you've got your lower level mind, which is just there to help you survive in this world. So your lower level mind, say you're hungry. It says, Amida, go to the fridge, grab ABC, eat, and you're fine. Which in my case is almost always ice cream. 
So those low level thoughts are there to help you sustain yourself in this world. If you start thinking of the energy and the vibration of thoughts, which I'll come to soon, these are all very low level in terms of what they make up. Then you've got in your mind the next level. Then you go to the higher level thoughts. Higher level thoughts are based on how do you make bigger, broader decisions? Where do we live? How do I build my career? What do I do with my children, the schooling? All the big decisions we all make. The bigger, higher level mind draws on memory, wisdom. It's able to process pros and cons of a much wider level until you reach that point where you make a decision. Yet, when you make that final decision, where does it come from? It comes from a higher level, which is third level, mm -hmm. which is what I call the intellect. Many people use different terms, but to me, the intellect is the highest level of your mind that borders between your material mind and your spiritual being, which is your higher self, your soul, which is the creator. Mm -hmm. So the intellect is the most enlightened level of your mind. Now, different types of thoughts emerge from the low level mind, different types from the higher level mind, and even more different are those that emerge from the intellect or thoughts that the intellect receives, which is what we call inspiration. So if you're talking about thoughts and their energy level and their vibration, then the thoughts that emerge from the intellect are of the highest vibration. And what do I mean by vibration? Vibration is not as we think of it, at least to me. Mm -hmm. I don't see vibration as gigahertz and cycles and stuff. As an engineer, I know what those things are. I look at vibration as the level of intelligence that is embodied in that thought. That's what makes its vibration. And the higher the level of intelligence that's embodied, I mean, you think of intellect and now you're going to inspiration, you're now going to infinite intelligence. That's the highest level of intelligence that is embodied in that thought. That makes it a thought of the highest vibration. Thoughts from your lower level mind are of the lowest vibration. Positive thoughts that have positive energy. For example, when you pray, if you are invoking something at a very high level, flows from your higher level mind to your intellect and beyond. What's the difference between prayer and meditation? I would say in prayer, you're talking to your creator. You're creating those very powerful high vibration thoughts when you talk to your creator. Whereas when you meditate, you are listening to your creator. So now the thoughts that are coming to you in meditation, and usually you are focused on your creator. So that's how that light comes to you in meditation. And that light is of infinite vibration. If you want to categorize vibration, you've got to think of the amount of intelligence that is embodied in that thought. Now. You asked me about the two angels that I use that come in and help us understand very complex things. One of them is called Cyrus and the other is called Luminous. Listeners, we will pick up exactly from this point for the next episode number 95. Amin has explained in simple terms the three stages of thought and what determines the vibration of thought. The vibration of thought was always mystical to me and after listening to Amin's explanation today, I am sold. I understand it so clearly now. In the next episode, he will talk about the power of thought with the help of his two angels, Cyrus and Luminous. This is where things get really interesting. So stay tuned for the next episode. As always, here are my key takeaways. 1. When you're living your life, you boil it down to two simple elements. One is moments and the other is thought. Two, thought has life. The more we repeat this to ourselves, the more we will be fully aware of the thoughts that we are entertaining. Three, the mind has three levels. 
the lower or basic mind is there to help us sustain in this world. The next level are the higher level thoughts that help us make bigger and broader decisions. But the decisions themselves come from the highest and most enlightened level of our mind, the intellect. The intellect borders between the material mind and the spiritual being. This is your higher self, your soul, your creator, whatever name you want to give it. 4. Vibration is the level of intelligence embodied in any given thought. I want to repeat this. Vibration is the level of intelligence embodied in any given thought. Thoughts from your lower level mind are the lowest vibration, and thoughts that emerge from the intellect are of the highest vibration. 5. Each one of us is an extremely empowered being because we have our roots in that infinite intelligence, which is our creator. None of us is more powerful than the other, but we are all enablers for each other. And lastly, I want to leave you with this beautiful thought. We are all enablers for each other. We may come and we may go. And when we go, we have left seeds behind. Long after we have gone, these seeds will keep growing. And then there will be other enablers who will give beauty to the fruits and flowers that have grown from our seeds. And knowledge will keep flowing. So here is food for thought for everyone. Ask yourselves, what seeds are you leaving behind? What are you enabling? And finally, let's begin to believe in the power of thought. Because thought has life. This brings us to the end of this episode. I will bring you the next episode of Sharing Life Lessons with Amin Daya next weekend. Until then, be happy, be safe, and be blessed.